Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Say it again. We did not put our people in nursing homes. That's right. That's right. We mm -hmm. kept them home. I don't care if they had Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. dementia, or whatever. Mm -hmm. We kept them home. And you know what's even bigger than that? That people don't realize the caregiver is the oldest, the oldest form, respected form of work. Hello? That's right. That's right. It's them. a whole job to take care of the people yep. that's home while the other people go out and make the money and, and make, do whatever they got to do to bring it on back that's in. It. It's a real job. That's right. Because mm -hmm. you're the one that's there on those days when they're, they want to be evil right. and nasty. <laughs> <laughs> or I've, had, I've had a lady call. Was one Valentine's Day. I'm like, okay. You don't want to get up? Fine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have my breakfast in your kitchen at, my, at your kitchen table. So, and her husband, her son, she lived with his son. But he worked overnight because he was working for Del Mar. Mm -hmm. He was upstairs asleep. So she, I'm sitting in the living room. All of a sudden, I get this knock on the door. Two big, huge policemen. I said, come on in. Mm -hmm. So I go upstairs and I call the son. I said, you're not going to believe what your mother has done. She called 911 and told them that this black lady mm. was sitting in her kitchen at her kitchen table Reading a Reader's Digest, eating Twisted Donuts. That part oh, she, she did have it. right. She <laughs> had it right, because I sure was, but she forgot the hot chocolate part. <laughs> so, From the so, fact that she was hired by family. <laughs> so she, he comes downstairs, and if looks could have killed, Mama would have been gone. So after the police straightened everything else out, so <clears throat> he, the cops leave. So he goes on upstairs. So she, he said, she said, I don't know why you're here. I said, because your son hired me. This woman looked at me in my face and she said, well, since he hired you, you go upstairs with him. But you know what her problem was? She was bored. She was used to driving. Husband was a retired firefighter. Mm -hmm. He had died. So she got his pension, which was good. Oh, she wanted. I told her son, I said, you know what you need? To do? <coughs> Take that car that's sitting in that driveway get it fixed so she can drive it. She was paralyzed on the left side. Mm -hmm. Just get it fixed so she can drive this car. Because mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with her mind. No sooner he did that, she was off and running. Mm -hmm. Had her, her old self. Her old self. Out playing cards with the girls. Got her life back. She got her life back. From yep. your suggestion, yep. <laughs> the caregiver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, the caregiver. She ain't even like me. <laughs> Still straightened her out. Right, yes, right. Gave her what she needed. I used to get a but car. But the family was happy, though. They were. The family probably loved you for it. Yep. He said, oh, my goodness. He said, that's all it took? Mm -hmm. She went and even went and got a boyfriend. Uh-oh. How old was she? She was then, we talking in the early 80s. She was then in her early 70s. So she was still young. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. She cooked. The only mm -hmm. thing I was just there to make sure she didn't stop. Shout out to the 70 year olds in the building. Hello, <laughs> young cougars. <laughs> Wait, and you know, she lived until she was like 90. Mm. And every year I got a Christmas card and a birthday card. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day. At the end of the day. Nothing <laughs> like it. And they couldn't have bought that. Mm -mm. They couldn't have bought they, all the money in the world. They, they, they couldn't have brought that to the table. Nope. Because they kept saying they just didn't know what it was. I said, well, just let me talk to her. Let me mm -hmm. give her on a good day. Because I said, she would talk to me. Mm -hmm. So one day I'm like, what is it that you really want to do? She said, I really want to get up and go by myself. Mm -hmm. I said, really? She said, I got that car sitting right there. I said, what if I talk to your son and see if you can, it can be fixed so you can drive it? She said, you think? I said, you still got your license and then you still keep them up, right? She said, yeah. I said, all you got to do is prove to the motor vehicle. Right. That once this car is equipped for you to drive, for you, right. that you can get in and out with no problem. Absolutely. You're good to go. And they did, and there she went. That right. woman. We, she'd wait for me to come on. Come on, let's go. We'd be all up in Concord Mall. <laughs> 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 Ooh, I was having a ball with her. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Absolutely. So she got 10 good years. To give she back. had another 10 years after that because she still she lives to be lived, That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So but you might have gave her, you might have gave her an extra 10 years yeah. as the caregiver. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See what the caregiver do for you? God, yeah. darn. You want your parents to live a little longer, your loved ones to be around a little longer. You want to bring some smiles to their faces, some joy into the building. This is what you do. Call me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'm calling. Mr. KC, that's what we do. <laughs> yep. It takes, like they say, it takes the community. Yeah. Not only to raise kids, but mm -hmm. to keep our elderly mm -hmm. in check. Yeah, a guy told me one time, I said, man, 
I said, I swear to God, man, it's, it's getting rough taking care of my parents, man. My pop, man, I said, we argue everything. He, you know, I said, man, this dude give me the business every day. He said, man, look, once an adult, twice a child. That's it. And I said, wow, I never realized never, yeah. that. I never like, realized didn't that. Didn't they used to tell you when you were younger, as you grow older, you revert right back to childhood? I didn't realize that. I mean, it's real. And it's real. It's real. Yep. You were right back. Because my grandmother and her sister, they were three years, they were born three years apart and they died three years apart at the same exact age. Yeah. So one, my grandmother had lung cancer and the other one had emphysema. So, wow. I mean, they were like, they were worse than like kids. same thing, eh? mm -hmm. They were worse than <laughs> wow. kids. Oh my God, they were worse than children. If I gave one dessert first, the other one be mad. It sound like my mom and her sister. So I got Man. to the point, I used to tell them, just go to your room right now. <laughs> right. Okay? I am not, had so much oxygen tube and they used to tangle each other up. Oh, mm. it was funny. I was just waiting for the fist to start flying. My mom and I used to do it in shifts. Mom got the day shift, I'd take the night shift. <laughs> so it got to the point, I had to, I used to tell them, look, this week you get a bath first. This is your week to get the baths first. Your week is next week. Okay? <laughs> next week. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm like, I'm bathing you every day, but you're first this week. She's not first this week. Oh. And it was so funny. My grandmother used to just go, Helen, you just you just need to turn that fan off because they both died having hot flashes at 75. Wow. They was twins for real. Yes, they, you might have. You oh, boy, they were tripping. Wow. So my grandmother used to say, Steffi. When I die, don't bury her next to me. <laughs> Cause I want some rest. I'm like, Mom, you gonna get it. You gonna have rest. But yeah, don't put her next to me. If she done been with me all my life. What my uncle do? Put her right next to each other. I said, she did it. He did it. I said, you gonna get it when you meet up with him. But yep, them two. They, that and actually, they were. That's why they were at each other's throats because they were so close. But yeah, they were born three years apart, died three years apart, and died at the same exact age, mm. seventy five. But mom and I stuck in with them too. Then they left, and it was two other older sisters. One was that we had, my aunt had to put her in a nursing home. But she was 104 when she died. And then that one that was still living was one left. She just recently passed about three years ago. Oh, yeah, wow. She was, she just, had, she would have had a, her, she would have been she about 107 there. or 108 she, she this month. There. She would have had, she had a birthday earlier this month. Wow. Yep, she never smoked, never drank. Wow. Mm hmm. 107, that's a good number. Yeah. Yes, you know what they expect. As long as I got my mind. <laughs> yeah, 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 yep. absolutely. Don't don't guess. Don't play around. Call I me. I know. <laughs> yeah, call them. <laughs> are you hiring um, home health aides? We are that? absolutely are hiring all, right. all the home health aides we can get. We kind of re-engineer the process, though. We don't just hire everybody. I know that's right. We can't. Not, <laughs> we can't. You can't. Not in this day and age. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, what we do is... We keep a, a, a gene pool, I guess, of the best candidates at all times. But as far as the as far as the placement goes, it's all about the customer. So mm -hmm. people call up and, you know, we send a lady out to her house, Director Ivy. Shout out, Director Ivy. She'll go out to your house and then she'll figure out uh, what the best needs are for the client. Right. And then, you know, we got a nice gene pool to pick from. Okay. And, you know, because everybody just don't mix with everybody. And when you're spending your money out your pocket yeah. you don't want to be paying for some people that you don't like like yeah. i don't like this person i definitely yeah. don't want them in my house yeah. so yeah. we need to make sure that everybody uh you know the con uh the personalities no conflict stuff mm -hmm. like that and that they're there to do a good job exactly you know sometimes uh you know we are uh just companionship but you know we do a little more and you know they might got a, a client who needs a little more mm -hmm. you know so yeah. we don't want to just give you anybody Exactly. You know, or we don't want to exactly. be, you know, seized, unseasoned kids or, you know, you're paying good money. That's right. And you want people to come out here and, and, and treat your, your parents and your loved ones fairly. Like, family, you, right. and like you would right. treat them and like you want to be treated. And, so, exactly. you know, we don't just throw anybody out. You're paying your money. That's right. And it's not cheap. It's not cheap. <laughs> Same way what I say with the nursing homes. Yeah. It's not cheap. It's not cheap. It's not cheap. Not but guess what? It's worth every penny. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. I believe hey, it. Hey, I had two parents came out the hospital one time. I said, oh, my God, what are we going to do? had to come get a direct care worker didn't even understand what it, what would, it would do, do for me and, and how, how it even helped me free my life up see yeah because so, yeah, your yeah. life is if you don't your life is like you can't in. even make time to go out and get the money no more nope because <laughs> you're stuck in the house 
trying to take care of some people that you could take care of when you was out working. <laughs> Especially if it was me, because I wasn't built like that. Like, you know, until, you know, like it really clicked, like, oh my God, they really need me. And I like, I had to literally move in. Yep. You know what I mean? So, you yep. know, a lot of people, you know, yep. you, you might don't have that kind of time or that kind of yep. schedule or whatever you got to do. Yep. So you, you need a little more. Yep. Exactly. You know, call me. Because I, you know, like I said, between my mother and I, mom had the day shift. I worked during the day. That's right. And I took the night shift. And then we were both there on the weekends. And mm -hmm. I mean, there were clothes over this house, clothes over here, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So it was like, mm -hmm. whatever, we just got to do what we got to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. When he ain't got them blessings. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <coughs> Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And I said, you know, I can at least say when she passed... I did everything. I did everything I could do. I could do. Yeah, everything I could do. Everything I could do. Yeah, yeah. If you don't like me, it's personal. Because <laughs> <laughs> yep. I did everything. I did I could everything do. I could possibly do. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yep. So that's my story. I heard that, and that was a good one too. That was real. <laughs> that's what made it so good. <laughs> we yep. couldn't have wrote that book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you got a good one that you want to tell. Call me, 302-689-3240, 302-689-3240, Mr. KC, caregiver extraordinaire. <laughs> well, I'm going to find you somebody for your loved one. Don't worry about that. You, you safe in our hands. All right, we got Miss Stephanie, and we out of here. All righty, uh -huh. peace. Uh, wherever you're from, put it in the comments. Smash the wild face. Give me everything you got. Let me know what's going on. If you got some parents or some loved ones that need taken care of. 302-689-3240. 302-689-3240. Oh, God, I couldn't help that. <laughs> Ooh, he'll learn it soon. <laughs>